River State Governor Nyesum Wike on Thursday fired back at the chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Yocha Ayu, for referring to some members of the party as children. Wike challenged Ayu to show himself as a man of honor and integrity by fulfilling his promise that he would vacate the chairmanship seat if the northern region produces the presidential candidate of the party. Now, according to reports, after losing the PDP presidential primary to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, uh, the River State Governor, Nyesem Wike, outlined conditions for remaining within the party. One of the reported conditions is that Ayu, who hails from Benue State, also who is a northerner, uh, must resign. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, Dr. Chidi Lloyd. He is the chairman of Moha Local Government Area in River State. And Ose Aneni is a People's Democratic Party uh, member. Ose, it's so good to have you join us. Glad to be here. Great. Let's first lay a foundation here. Of course, it's no longer news that there's been a back and forth between Governor Wike and, of course, uh, the chairman of your party. Uh, many would say that this is a Wike problem, but uh, there are those who have come out to say that this is a Southern Caucus you know, situation and that there was a previous agreement uh, within the party as to um, how things would turn out if, you know, a Northerner, um, you know, picked up that ticket now that we know that the former vice president is holding that ticket and he's the candidate for the People's Democratic Party. One would wonder why the chairman um, is still seated there. Um, again, Sam, it's a pleasure to be on your program again. Yes. Um, and you asked a really good question. So the, the, the PDP structure is not heavy, if that's a, a phrase I can use. Our presidential candidate is from the north, our chairman is from the north, our DOT chairman is from the north. And so you can make an argument for one of these offices to be to move to the south. Mm -hmm. The problem we, we sort of face is that we are about 26 days away from the start of campaign. And the PDT constitution actually says that even if the chairman were to resign or step down or step aside, the Constitution says the person who replaces him, replaces him is the Deputy Chairman North, who would also be a North winner. So, you know, the, the resignation of IU doesn't quite cure what um, Governor Wiche and the Southern Caucus, as we call them, are asking for. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. We can have an emergency convention. We would have to get rid of the Chairman and Deputy Chairman North so that the Deputy Chairman staff, uh, Honorable Arapaja, comes into office or elect new, new executives into the, into the seat. But as you can, you can see, it's not a simple, uh, process. It's not as simple as asking Ayu to step aside. And um, just to put some detail to what he actually said, even though there was general understanding that if a northern candidate emerged, the chairman would step aside. What you actually said was that he would only step aside if the party asked him to. And that would be the NEC or the DOT or his NWC. And that hasn't quite happened yet. Hmm. What I do, I, I do sympathize 100% with the Southern Caucus. We are going into a national election. And like I said, I don't, I don't think it's sensible for the PDP to go in North Heavy. As you, as you're well aware, Body George, Body George has asked that not only should I you step down, but the chairmanship should actually come to the Southwest so that in the Southwest we can campaign against an APC, for instance, who is fielding a candidate from the Southwest. Great. Um, Dr. Lloyd, you're just you're joining us um, on, on this call. So I'm going to turn to you. Yesterday, Governor Wike again made the news. He talked um, directly, of course, to the chairman of the party. And he did make some statements that, um, you know, left a lot of people wondering um, about he um, working against the party. What exactly do you think that the governor meant by that? Well, uh, first, let me thank you for this opportunity. And to also state that the governor of River State didn't leave any ambiguity in what he said. Uh, uh, what he said was correct with what the chairman of the party said. That his arrogance, not 
So it does appear that he does not be a chairman that will lead the party. And that, of course, if he, if that is with national chairman, he will assist him. So there is no ambiguity in what governor will but it, it, I mean, just like um, Ose has just said, it's a few days to you know the, the start of campaigns for the elections in 2023. Um, that is obviously upsetting. And what does this mean for the party in itself? Um, as much as there is some infighting, um, if a governor who obviously is a governor of River State and one of the strongholds of the PDP comes to, comes out in public to make these kinds of statements, that does mean that. He obviously does not want his party to win in 2023. And so what no, does that, that mean? Is not, that, that is not correct, my sister. What happened, the, the, the national chairman of party, the party shouldn't ordinarily refer to the government of his party as children. So I, you know, there is cause and effect. So we should look at what, what necessitated talk from uh, And unfortunately, I... Uh, in this program, in, in on this your platform, and what happened is that the PDP abdicated the school pit to strangers, and the strangers are like people like the party. But because when he defected, just like I did, when he defected from the PDP, if the likes of Governor Wike, who have never left the party, had left, that I would have been nothing for a year to come back to. Let alone describe people who are stood their, their ground and supported the party as children. But what the Yoja you did not tell the public about outside PBT was how he came and knelt down and cried to the governor to be to be to be the national chairman. And he didn't also tell the, the public what he said about the outside planning people, how they hate people of Benue State. So one is shocked today to see him not being uh, doing the thing doing. I've always said that it's not the attitude of people in the book. Okay. All he would have done naturally as natural uh, is, to, is to make sure he, he, he brings everybody together so that we can... Uh, but first he goes Dr. Dr. Lloyd, I, I, we're, having a, we're having a problem with your connection. You're breaking. I, I'm hoping that the guys can fix that. But let me just go back to Ose uh, while we try to fix your audio. Ose, um, I'm going back to what Governor Wike said yesterday. Some parts of his statement read that um, that because of the insincerity on the part of the leadership of the party, he's saying that Nigerians must be careful. Uh, I'd like to quote him directly. Thinking if you give these people power, how grateful will they be to Nigerians? Um, I've kept quiet thinking they will reconcile. Now that you have become arrogant to say you were elected, where did you campaign? Where were your campaign posters? Even when you gave, we gave you money to print posters, you pocketed it. Now let's talk about the sincerity. And, and of course, all of these things, Nigerians are taking mental notes, if not you know, real notes. Um, and like I said, we're just a few days away from campaign. Um, should people be worried, especially those who are followers of the People's Democratic Party? Can these fences be mended anytime soon? And you've listened to the Amoha local government chairman uh, as to what he said. Um, that's a really good question again. I, I will just remind listeners that politicians, we, we speak in very, very melodramatic, very, very theatrical language. When campaign season almost, and you will see a lot of bombast, you know, verbosity in, in the way we speak. And in saying that, you know, I, I, I would urge members of the PDP and the leadership of the PDP to exercise some restraint. You know, so it's, it's fine when you are speaking positively, but sometimes, you know, these excesses and passions might overflow when you start expressing grievances. So just as I would condemn um, the chairman's use of, you know, the words, the, the majority of children describing leaders and governors of the party, uh, I would also condemn language that suggests that the chairman was kicked out of the gutter. And the problem with this kind of escalation is that 
you get to a point where it almost becomes impossible to mend fences. We aren't at that point yet. It's of note that the candidate himself, Waziri Atiku Abubakar, isn't engaged in this type of rhetoric or back and forth and has always said he's standing as a unifier for the party, is open to negotiations, is open to addressing all grievances that might um, that anybody might hold. And I, I, I don't think that we are at the point where, you know, alarm bells should start ringing either within the party or nationally that we are unable to get our houses in order before campaign starts. You know, so, you know, my brother, uh, on the Chief Lloyd, I would also urge him to exercise some restraint. This is a public platform. Um, it does us no, no good to denigrate or diminish characters just because we are batting for one side. Ultimately, Governor Wicked West is out on his sleeve. He's a very honest, upright, forthright person. But there are some conversations that I think that he and the candidates will have to hold behind closed doors and not on the podium um, backed by a singing band. Talking about meetings behind closed doors, we saw that happen over the weekend in, in, the, in the UK. We saw a lot of politicians meeting with the former president, Lucia Gompasson. We even saw the presidential candidate for your party. Governor Wiki was there. We saw the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Uh, of course, we would have thought that these conversations would have been had. And this would have been, you know, one way or the other, a douser for the tension. But here we are again having this conversation. So really, are these talks ever going to work? What you're seeing is drama. It's, it's not, not conversation. And Governor Wiki is the head of a, a caucus from the South. And, you know... They have put out what they want, one of which is that the chairman should step down just so we get a little bit more balance going into elections. There are some other conditions that they have asked for, and the candidate, uh, Wazir Atiku, is considering this, these um, conditions. Some of them I know he's able to meet. Some of them require a little bit more negotiation. But we sort of are having like sideline distractions, what I, I, I will respectfully call them where people who aren't actually part of the conversation are getting involved and are distracting the candidate and are distracting Governor Wiki. I think this thing is going to be resolved primarily by Governor Wiki and His Excellency Abubakar Atiku. Um, and everything else is just noise and distraction at this point. The mm -hmm. fact that they are still talking and still negotiating is sign for hope. Mm. Um, Dr. Lord, I think we have you back now. Um, let me come back to you on this issue. Um, I, I did. I was trying to ask. Where, I mean, the Governor Wiki had come out earlier on to say he would never go anywhere else. He would work for the PDP. He would work to make sure that the PDP wins at the polls. But then, fast forward to yesterday, he's singing a different song. Now, what does this also do to the psyche of the voters in River State, being that, you know, he, of course, is the governor of the state and that's the ruling party. Um, does this not signal that there's trouble in paradise and this might, one way or the other, um, give you more undecided votes as opposed to giving you more PDP votes? I'm wondering. Well, uh, if I listen carefully, I think uh, there would have been no need for this. If he said uh, where those uh, who are talking it, and Waziri Abuba are this, uh, I would I, I would not want to act. Uh, yeah, Dr. Lloyd, I think we're still having connection issues. I don't know if you're using a, a hearing, um, you know, an earpiece or something. I think you have to ditch that because um, it's interfering and we're unable to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I said, uh, if I listen to my brother, will say, uh, it will, this interview wouldn't have been necessary since he said uh, those who speak or continue to speak for either Wike or Abubakar Atiku are distracting them. I wouldn't want to be one of those who distract any or either of them. Okay. I, <laughs> okay. Uh, but you didn't, you didn't really answer my question as to what this... Back and no, forth. no, no, no.